So for simple Euclidean case, we know that the dot product phi times psi is nothing but sum over phi i, psi i, where a is the dimensionality of the vector space. Uh, this changes if you have complex vector space. For example, this is written as that. So from here we can see actually that phi psi is equal to psi phi star. For example, let's say my phi is let's say in two dimension is i plus 1, i minus 1, let's say my psi is i and 1. Now I can <coughs> find the dot product by writing phi psi equals I have to take the complex conjugate so i1 minus i and minus 1 plus um, actually minus 1 minus i and this multiplied by i1 and we have our um, dot product. Now there's one thing which can be observed is that phi is same as or you can put a star here. Um, so basically it means that if phi is given as 1 plus i, i minus 1, then this, uh, um, well actually, yeah, so this will be equal to 1 minus i and minus 1 minus i. And now you can actually see that um, phi phi is nothing but the something like that. So it's very similar to including a space, just that we have to take care of the complex conjugate here. <coughs> there are a few more properties that need to be discussed, which are phi a where a is some real number you can always take it out and uh, we already have discussed the norm of psi is given as square root of psi psi a few identities that will always be satisfied, which will be Simply be, it's not difficult to prove all these identities, it's pretty straightforward. And very much related to this, we know that a phi psi will be nothing but a star.
example we have to just take complex conjugate phi psi this is all Hilbert space okay let's talk few more things if these vectors phi let's say they form a complete set which means um, uh, same, same as like complete set means the set of some independent vectors which are sufficient in describing the state of a system and let's call them phi m where m is 0 1 and so on some like eigenstates which are orthogonal. if they're not orthogonal you can always orthogonalize them using grand schematic process we'll discuss about this I'm not exactly sure if this is the smelling, right spelling, but this is what it is. And if they are orthogonal, we know that phi m, phi n is delta m. Okay, as we discussed that any general solution, if you remember the class on Schrodinger equation, where we had different eigenvectors, eigen eigen state, uh, eigen functions for different eigenvalues, and we said that psi solution for psi in that Schrodinger equation can be written as a linear combination of these eigenfunctions. So we can always express that very similar to linear. This is just linear al algebra. Moreover, we know that phi m. We can always find the coefficient equals n equals 1 to infinity phi m phi n a n just following from the previous equation and if we know that this is going to satisfy delta m n a n equals a m so we can find the coefficient by simply taking an inner product of the wave function or any function which is a linear combination of these basic eigen eigenfunctions moreover the norm of psi can be written as n equals 1 we have m i'm using 0 so let's remove 0 here it's just 1 to infinity and this is square this can be written as phi n psi which basically means is a sum of coefficient squares also we can write psi Phi as simple unity operator. We'll talk about operators later, which already we have discussed in little detail, but we'll talk about them more. Equals n equals one to infinity. Assuming we need all eigenstate to express solution of Schrodinger equation, that's why you are summing up to infinity. It may happen that you may have a closed problem, but here, assuming a generic generic problem here, this is what it is. Okay. Um, so this is a little sketchy right now, but we'll talk about this in the following classes when we'll talk about operators.